introduce myself. DJ Envy, Angela Yee, and Charlemagne the God. Well, y'all done came a long way. I think that y'all have a certain amount of respect for, you know, what everybody else does. And y'all are just the best at what y'all do. This platform, the reach y'all have that you've earned, makes space for somebody like me. You guys have a direct line to the culture. Oh, my God. Charlemagne and DJ Envy? Yes, you are. All I do is read about the Breakfast Club. Really? Every morning, That's good. you guys are trending. Every, uh, you know, I drag my ass out of bed. I'm like, uh, what happened on the Breakfast Club today? Get, get your ass up. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 Good morning, DJ MV. Charlamagne the God. Peace to the planet. It's Thursday. Yes, Thursday. Big we, Thursday. The weekend, weekend is here. It's almost here. No, it's here, man. Three day weekend this weekend. Nope. It could be four if you wanted to. Oh, my if you goodness. start today. Yep. I'm starting today. You starting today? Yep. That's what you're doing? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Well, you, if you want to identify as the weekend as today, then I can Ex- identify as the weekend There you go. I'm today, glad so. you know. I'm right. glad you know. Today is Thursday, but I identify today as the start of the weekend. All right, man. Okay? So I got a four-day weekend. No, let me see. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Would that be five? How long is that? Four. Oh, Thursday. Well, Thursday. You don't count Monday, right? You don't count today. You don't count th- No, I do count He's today. today. That's Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Monday. Monday is a holiday. I got a five-day weekend? I'm not off today. Yes. I'm not off today. He's saying to I am off today. Stop running. telling me what I am, Nick. I told you what I identify as. I identify as off today. All right. Okay. You're definitely off. Yeah. Yes. Whatever for, yeah, definitely off. He's way off. Whatever floats your boat. Well, good morning, guys. How you guys feeling? How was your yesterday? What you do yesterday after the breakfast club? How was your day? How was your night? Did you eat well? Was everything okay? Did you sleep well? Good morning. You sound very concerned. I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm just asking. I can't do much. Well, yeah. How was your walk around the, uh, the backyard? <laughs> it was fine. It was fine. Everything's good here. You know, I think COVID is coming to a close soon, hopefully. I know the, the regulations are confusing, but it says you have to quarantine for five days. And then you have to be outside with a mask or wherever for another five days. But I have another at-home test to take today to see what happens. Okay. Feel, feel free to stay home next week. Okay? We don't, we don't need no chances. We don't need to take case. no chances. I, know, I, can't wear, I can't wear a mask in there. So, yeah. Goodness. So, are you going, so you're not going away this weekend? Well, we'll see what happens when I take this test. <laughs> wow. You, you know Envy was setting you up the whole time. He was like, I see. He, that was all the setup just to see if he has been quarantining. That's all that was. That whole line of question. And I'm listening. I'm like, his daddy really is a cop. Yeah, shut That's up, all man. I was thinking the whole time. <laughs> you know you done effed up, right? Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Well, uh, yesterday my kitties had a, a baseball and softball game. Probably one of the uh, slowest things. When your kids start, just starting to get into sports, sometimes it's just bad, man. Sometimes everything is just all about it. The pitching, the hitting, just it's just a long ass game. That, that that'd be the longest six innings ever. Yeah, but that's a learning curve though, especially when you have multiple kids. Because I remember when my daughter first started running track and she um she did the long jump. Like mm-hmm. it was, literally was like at practice. It was like the first time she ever did it. Mm-hmm. She was young, young. She was younger than. Me. I go, that was terrible. She just burst into tears, and I'm like. Oh, my wife was like, why did you say that? And I'm like, why did and you my, say that? Because it was terrible, but that was one of the first moments I realized, like, you just can't say everything that comes <laughs> to your mind when it comes to your children. Terrible. But I mean, I was not, she's terrible. The know, long the jump was terrible, terrible you yeah. know? But then you realize, you realize the power of your words as a parent and how much you can, you know, empower your kids all like, discourage them and, and with just one slip of the tongue. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. How about yesterday in the middle of the game, right? The middle of the game, base is loaded. My son's playing uh, second base at the time, mm-hmm. right? I'm sitting on the side. He walks over to me in the middle of the game like, Dad, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm like, there's a game going on. He's a, How old is he? He's uh, eight. Yeah. You, that's potty training. You taught him to tell you when he got to go to, to the bathroom. <laughs> but this in the middle of the game. His base is loaded. There's a hitter on it. Well, you didn't explain that to him. That's not how potty training works. In potty training, we never teach baseball. Oh, my goodness. Okay? I was like, well, go around. I said, go behind the tree. He's like, Dad, people are watching. I'm like, oh, my gosh. You told your child to go behind a tree. He's playing a game. game. Yes. Ow. He needs to pull up. Okay. At eight? Clearly. If you if his daddy not going to let him pee during the game. <laughs> Jesus oh my Christ. Christ. All right. Well, let's get the show cracking. Front page news, what are we talking about? Well, let's talk about this executive order that Joe Biden signed yesterday. It has to do with federal police practices. All right. We'll get into that next. And we got a worldwide exclusive. This is Kanye West 
XXX Extension. It's called True Love. And it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We're going to be playing that every hour on the hour. If you just missed it, that was Kanye West XXX Extension. Mm. It's called True Love. Now let's get into some front page news. And now let's start NBA. Did you see the games last night? Uh, I did watch the second half of the Celtics Miami Heat game. When I watched it, it was like they were only down by like two, but that's not how it finished. <laughs> no, nah, Celtics beat the Heat uh, last night, ninety three to eighty. Yeah, I mean, I, I had the Celtics. I picked the Celtics to win the series, but I mean, Miami is really banged up right now. It seems like Jimmy Butler's playing through injury, Kyle Lowry's playing through injury, Her- Tyler Harrow. I don't even know if he did. He play. I don't think he played last night either. Did he? Uh, he didn't no, right now. No, he didn't play. Yeah. Nope. Uh-uh. But I still had the Celtics winning the series. But. Yeah, Butler had 13 last night. Mm-hmm. And last night, uh, Tatum had 22. Brown had 25. All right. What else we got, Yeezy? All right. Well, Joe Biden signed an executive order yesterday. That is to improve accountability in policing. It was also the second anniversary of George Floyd's death. And the family was there as well, as well as uh, members of the family of Breonna Taylor. Now, this is just an executive order. And so what that means is that Congress is still deadlocked on the issue of the Justice and George Floyd Policing Act. Uh, With lawmakers unable to reach an agreement on how to reform police policies or to reduce mass shootings, there are limited avenues for advancing these campaign promises that he has, but he is trying to strike a balance between police and also between civil rights groups. Uh, There's a lot of rising concerns about crime, and sometimes that can eclipse the calls for reform, but most of this order is focused on federal law enforcement agencies. So, for example, they are required to um, review and revise policies on use of force, They'll also create a database to help track officer misconduct. And this cannot require local police departments to participate in that database. So that means that problem officers, you know, uh, say you want to hop from job to job. They're looking for ways to use federal funding to encourage their cooperation. So they can't make the local police departments participate, but they do uh, want to encourage them to do that. So Joe Biden um, did talk about it. He said that this will not prevent every tragedy but we know certain ones will have significant impact and no negative impact on the second amendment. Yeah, I mean, these I mean, I guess something's better than nothing. A lot of folks smarter than me think it's a bunch of, you know, nothing, but it's just like these things aren't impacting us on a federal level though. Like it's not the federal police that are out here, you know, committing these these crimes. Now, this, um, the FBI, um, ICE, Secret Service, and Customs and Border Protection are required to participate. So the database will have records of officers convicted of crimes, firings, and sustained complaints or records of disciplinary actions for serious mon- misconduct, among other issues. And that will be available to state and local agencies. So, uh, like I said, local, uh, you know, uh, non-federal entities are not required to do that, so... Yes, and that's that mm-hmm. kind of defeats the purpose. Because once again, it's not the federal entities that are, you know, committing these acts of police brutality that we see on the regular. All right. Now, I don't know what, if the executive order can't do that. I don't know why well, it's Char- not for local. Well, we, we, we know we had uh, Ch- Charles Blow was on MSNBC yesterday, and he kind of like really, really, really broke it down, I thought. Did they get that in? Mm-mm. All right. right. Well, that is front page news. We'll get more into it next hour. All right. Now, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open again. 800-585-1051. Call us up. Let us know how your day was, what you want to vent about. Anything. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Let's go. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're man or black. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. So if you got something on your mind, let it out. Hello, who's this? This is Angelo for Rockford. I want to give a shout out to Rockford, Illinois. Good morning. Illinois, what up, man? Get it off your chest, brother. Man, I want to get it off my chest, man. I just want to say that all these political games and all these things going on and all these mass shootings, stop taking the black father out the hood, out the house, out the understanding, out the community. Stop putting these felons on these young boys, man, where they can't never bear arms to protect our children in the school. Okay. Oh, what are you saying? You you're saying felons? What, I'm confused. Say it again, bro. I'm I'm, I'm saying how this messed up the system. Throw these felonies on these young boys so early, and take their right to bear arms so that they can have some protections and show that the communities ain't going anymore. Oh, I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, I, I do think that that has to change a lot, too. I, I, I think if you commit a crime that, that gets you a felony, especially at a young age, there should be a, a way to change that, to flip that, that, you know, you can change it because everybody evolves. Everybody changed their lives. There's, there's things that we all did as, as teens that we would never do now because we were young, we were dumb, we were stupid, but that doesn't define us, you know? Absolutely. If you don't grow, you're dead. That's right. That's the, that, that is exactly the, that exactly it. If you're not growing, you're dying. Hello, who's this? Yeah, this OG Knowledge coming at y'all from WB Underground Newsroom. And what I got on my mind today is fathers, black fathers, matter of fact, that are not stepping up and doing the right thing for their sons. Our sons are out here dying each and every day and each and every way. And we have a lot of these guys, you know what I'm saying, that have household names that are not stepping up, you understand me, to get some of these kids off the street. We dying out here, man. We need some help, and we need some help bad. And we need our fathers to step up, step out, show up, and show up for our sons and our daughters. I, I love this energy this I, morning. I, I do agree I, with I, that, too. I, 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 I love you. I love you, and I love what the last caller just said. I mean, I, I, yes, we do have to be a village. It takes a village, right? Absolutely, and I agree. Like, p- parents... Right? If you got kids, you got young kids, you got you got to step up. You you got to pull up. You got to make sure your kids are doing the right thing. Like I said, my dad was 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 following me home from the bus at times to make sure I was doing the right thing. He was checking up, checking up on me to make sure I was doing the right thing. Every once in a while, I'm sure he was in my room looking around my room to make sure there was nothing in there <laughs> illegal. Like it's, it's I do the same thing with my kids. You know what I mean? I, I check up on you them. You have to micromanage your kids. Follow them. I, you know I got to track all my kids' cars. Like I make sure they're doing the right thing. And it's As not you that should. I don't trust them. It's just. I want to make sure they're doing the right I don't thing. trust the world. <laughs> okay. The world. I don't trust the world. So, yes, I'm going to micromanage my kid's situation. Thank you, brother. Hey, one more thing, man. We got to give our queens their props for stepping up, stepping out, showing up and showing up for their Absolutely. sons and their daughters. Always. And, 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 you know, our sons and daughters are going to these colleges, these uh, D1 colleges. You know what I'm saying? They got to start changing their their way. They got to start changing their SBCU is, is is what we need to do. What's that? What's that? SB, what's that? SBCU? What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. That's probably not the uh, abbreviations for it. But the black HBCU. HBCU. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. HBCU. Whoa. HBCU. Did you go to one? I didn't no, go to one either. either. You you sound like me. You didn't go to one. Uh-huh. <laughs> you said, LMFAO. I was like, what? He said SB. SB. I'm like, I'm like, small and he, he said it with conviction, yeah, too. And I'm like, damn, I want my kids to go to one of those. I what said, is that? SB, small business. I was like, what is that? He, HBCU. He meant HBCU. All right. He had, a, he had the right word. We understand what he meant. 800 585 1051. Get it off your chest. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Wake up, wake up. Wake your ass. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed, we want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, good morning. Peace and blessings. How y'all feeling today? Peace, King. Stone, what up? Hey, this is Sean Stone with Sean Stone TV. Listen, <laughs> I love the <laughs> Angela E. Good morning. How you feeling? Good morning. Yeah, Charlamagne. Good Peace, morning. King. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Envy, good morning. Peace. Hey, listen, man. I love the way how you guys start off, start off the show. We're talking about your kids. You know what I mean? It's good energy this morning, man. And I just want to say, you know, I'm sorry for all them kids that lost their life. Man. Uh, yesterday, you know? Very man. sad. Mm-hmm. Man. Man, I don't feel like... I just feel like that's just pure evil. There's no yeah, mental it health is. there. It's just evil. You know what I mean? It's just good people and then you got just evil people that's just evil spirits you know what i mean yeah i can't wait to talk to my therapist about it this week you know i've been talking to a lot of individuals because it's been hard for me to chalk up the last two situations yeah. to just mental health because it's so premeditated the body armor yeah. the targeting you know knowing exactly who you want to go hit letting people know yeah. beforehand you know what i mean like it's like yeah. that don't sound like somebody who snapped to me nah it's just pure evil bro it's something that you can't physically explain it's just an evil spirit you yeah, know what I mean I agree that's what it is but uh, one more thing I just want to say uh, that new Kanye West song man sound very uh, strong I like that song shout out to Kanye keep him doing some good music yeah uh, just hit me up on Instagram Sean Stone Sean Stone TV and one more thing uh, I got a song can I sing a song real quick sure you wanna sing it go ahead <laughs> yeah 
Monkey pox, monkey pox, where are you? With Trav and oh his God. friends, Trav and his friends. Okay, monkey that's monkey enough. Pox, All this positivity, Sean Stone. Friends, his friends. What's wrong, man? What's wrong with you? What is wrong? What is what is wrong with you? I mean, not Sean for nothing. Stone. On, not for nothing. Why, can't, you, Sean you Stone? You can't be mad at Why Sean. Not? Now, now, because now. Travis said that Sean Stone was the one that brought Monkey Pox over. That's here. right. Exactly. But when Trav call up here with a, a freestyle on your ass, okay, and give you PTSD again from last time. I worry about Trav freestyle. I'm ready to go. You want a rematch? Just say you want a rematch, Trav. If you want a rematch, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm okay, to go. okay. So we, all right. I ain't gonna lie. Let's so, do it. Trav been poking your forehead, so I ain't mad at you. Pause. Hey, hey, come on. I don't go that way. I'm talking about his finger, man. His finger. No. Same. Whoa. 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 On, whoa. Whoa. Hey, sign that gay bill. <laughs> whoa. What the hell is going on? What is going on this morning? He started off with so much positivity. Man. Oh, my God. People are so crazy. <laughs> get, get it off your chest. 800 585 one what is wrong with our listeners? To this show? <laughs> we got rumors on the way. Oh Lord! Yes, let's talk about the time that Snoop Dogg turned down two million dollars. All right, we'll get into that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Listen up. It's just in. All the guys. The rumor report. Guys. With Angela. Angela Yee. It's the rumor report. The Breakfast Club. All right. Well, Snoop Dogg was talking about one time. Imagine this, turning down a $2 million offer to DJ. And not just to DJ, but to DJ at a Michael Jordan event. Here's what he had to say. One of the craziest deals I turned down, it was like $2 million to DJ for, I think it was a Michael Jordan event. And I turned it down. And I never met Michael Jordan. And you I still never met never, Michael? And I want to meet him. Well, if you don't mind me asking, why would you turn that down? Because I was doing some shit I had. To do when I have way more customers before I get to you. <laughs> no, but I, I never met Michael Jordan. I, I want to meet him, and I want to meet him on a different. I don't want to meet him on no. I'm out there DJing. I want to like meet him oh, as boss a fan. Boss. Yeah, yeah, as a fan, yeah. as a boss. It's like Mike. I love you since North Carolina. I'm a big fan of yours. I love what you do. You one of the greatest to ever do it. That just lets me know how rich Snoop is. He's booked and busy. Right. Huh? Yeah, booked and busy. <laughs> Imagine having so much to two do million. that you can turn down two million. <laughs> Yeah. And that's on Logan Paul's uh, podcast, Impulsive, by the way. All right. Now, Laverne Cox, congratulations to her. She has been honored as the first ever transgender Barbie. She said, I can't wait for our fans to find my doll on shelves and have the opportunity to add a Barbie doll modeled after a transgender person to their collection. She told people the experience was surreal. She said, I can't believe it. I love her outfit. It's a beautiful outfit. And, um, she also cited recent anti-trans legislation and discrimination against trans children, and that helped her share her pride that Barbie can show kids that there's hope and possibility for them to be themselves. So they are actually going to be also donating to the charity Trans Family SOS in Laverne Cox's name as well. She was very involved in the whole process of creating her very own doll, and this all launches ahead of her upcoming 50th birthday. Her birthday is on May 29th, so congratulations to her. All right, now the Martin Reunion special has gotten a premiere date, and that date is going to be um, June 16th. That's going to be on BET+. Plus. That's going to reunite the cast of Martin, and they said it's a 90-minute special with the original cast members, Martin Lawrence, uh, Tisha Campbell, Tatina Arnold, Carl Anthony Payne II. They'll be reminiscing about the series, the impact that it had on the culture, and it will also be hosted by Atheon Crockett. It's also reportedly going to take place on the iconic Martin living room set. Oh, that's dope. So Martin and, and Tisha Campbell, they, they squashed out their beef then, right? Yeah, they're going to be there. Okay, cool. Dope. They're going to be there. All right, now, Brittany Griner's wife, Sherelle Griner, has broken her silence on Brittany Griner's detainment in Russia. Um, she was speaking with Angela Ryan. Here's what she had to say. Is she being used as a political pawn? Yes. Yes. If it was LeBron or KD or Steph Curry, do you think that you would be sitting here today? You know, respectfully and no, you know, no shade to them um, when I say this, but the answer to that question would be no. I wonder, though. Wonder what? Right. If, if you're Russia mm -hmm. and you have a LeBron or a 
Curry. You're going to hold them till you I'm get a, the I'm best I'm going to hold them too. Yeah, I ain't going to let them you, go. You're going to absolutely positively hold them until you go. get the best Especially with, deal. you know, you're all get the sanctions everything and everything. You want. Yeah. A hundred percent. I'm not letting them go at all. That's, I'm, I'm going to keep them until I get them uh, sanctions uh, going. A hundred percent. My negotiation skills are up, but I wouldn't let them go. But I think what they're saying in that uh, conversation right there is that America would be negotiating already. You know what I mean? Like, there would be a lot of different things on the table. There would be a lot more discussions happening. They would be actively trying to get them home. I agree. That's what what they're saying. Mm -hmm. All right. Also on NBA Countdown, Sherelle Griner discussed uh, wanting to have a conversation with Joe Biden as well. Have you um, spoken to the president? I have not. Not met with him? No. If you had uh, the opportunity, Sherelle, today to say something to President Biden, what would you say? If he is a person that can get my person back, I would love to meet him. You know, I have requested a meeting with him. And so I hope he accepts in the near future, you know, to meet with me because I want my person back. You know, um, I feel every second that BG's not here. Okay. I need a second. It's okay. Take your time. I wonder how involved a spouse is when something like that happens. What do you mean? Because I mean, I'm sure the the, the country has to negotiate, right? But but how involved? Oh, I'm are sure you? Do they tell you everything? Do they not tell you? I'm sure she's on the lawyer's ass every day. I'm sure she's on whoever she needs to be talking to's ass every day yeah. about uh, getting Brittany. Because I was just right wondering, like, how involved do they allow the spouse to be? Because you know, at the end of the day, they want to keep everything quiet. They're trying to you know make a deal. Mm-hmm. I just wonder how involved. She can be, you know. Uh, I know one thing. That'd be a great PR move for Biden right now. Approval ratings in the Absolutely. toilet. Absolutely. You know, mid term, midterms around the corner. You can't get any legislation done. You know, just some executive orders yesterday. That was a cool, you know, PR move as well. But you know, this, this would, this would, this would, this would be something. Hmm. That, I agree. All right. She also. I agree. And I know she's been. Uh, Sherelle Griner has been speaking to Brittany Griner. She also was on um, Good Morning America with Robin Roberts, and she talked about how she first found out through Brittany. She said she started texting her around 2 a.m. and saying, "Babe, wake up! They have me in this room. I don't know what's going on." You know how horrifying it must be to get a text message like that. That's crazy, especially when from your your, your loved one out of the country. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. Yeah, because when you're out the country, no matter what country you're at, you you feel like. There's nothing you can do. You feel like there is no right. You got to play by their rules. And Mm -hmm. it's very, very scary. Uh, I was coming back from, um, where was I this week? In Africa. And my manager uh, lost his passport. And they wouldn't let him come back in. They was like, well, we can't do nothing with it. You got to prove that you're American. And luckily he found it. But I was nervous for him. How do you prove that you're American when you don't have a passport? Exactly. What do you do? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. What do you do in that situation? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Talk about you? Oh well, no. Well, you know that happened to me one time in DR. They thought I was Dominican. For you real. are. I'm not. But they wow. thought I was Dominican for real, and they you would are. not. They would not let me back in the country, you even are. with a passport. You are. They were talking to me Spanish. They put you me in the are. side room, and I was. I was you should scared. have told me you got dual citizenship. Yo, you are Dominican. No, but There's I was. Nothing wrong that they tried to keep you home, bro. They would not let me leave. Like, I'm serious. Like I was nervous. They put me in the side. They room. wanted to keep you there. They're like, yo, if you and your whole family come there, the population will increase. We need you. They kept talking to me in Spanish, and I was like, no, no, I, no, no, español. I was nothing. Wow, you just lied. <laughs> you know what? Forget. It. I did lie. I'm black. You know what? We got front page news next. See what we talk about. Okay. Yes, and Never let's give you some that, updates. I am. <laughs> on uh, Uvalde and the shooting, the massacre Jesus that Christ. happened there. If a guy has to yell out, "I am black," maybe he just maybe he needs to be uh, his identity needs to be tested a little bit. You know what? It's the bre- I need a DNA test, you bro. It's the Breakfast Club. What's African ancestry when you need it? <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Come on. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Angela Yee here, and if you want quality auto coverage for less, make the right call and go with the General Insurance. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com to find out how much you can save. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc. and Insurance Agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. The last night, NBA, the Celtics beat the Heat 93-80. What else we got, Yeezy? Uh, we are going to talk about the awful massacre at Robb Elementary School. We'll give you some of the details that we know about what happened on Tuesday. 
with the 18 year old gunman Salvador Ramos, who was from Uvalde. Now, he had been identified by officials and had shared his plans on Facebook about 30 minutes before reaching the school. He, they said he shot his grandmother in the face before heading to the school. The 66 year old grandmother made it to a nearby home. That's where she called police. And she does still remain hospitalized in critical condition. Now, minutes before the deadly assault at the school, he allegedly sent text messages to a girl in Germany that he met online. He said he had just shot his grandmother and he was going to shoot up an elementary school. They do have screenshots that were reviewed by CNN, and they also interviewed the teenage girl. Uh, They said he complained about his grandmother being on the phone with AT&T and that he uh, then said he shot his grandmother in the head. He then drove his grandmother's vehicle about a block and a half away from the school. He crashed at that point and he exited with a backpack with a rifle and went to the west side of the campus. They said a school resource officer engaged with Ramos and no gunfire was exchanged. He then entered the school through a back door, went down the hallway to the adjoining classrooms and they said that officers approached him and engaged with him. He entered a back door and then went down two short hallways and then into a classroom on the left-hand side. Um... Now, they said it took about 30 mm-hmm. minutes, they said, after he arrived on the scene for the gunman inside the school to be neutralized by law enforcement. He had one rifle in his possession when he went into the school, and he was wearing a tactical vest carrier with no ballistic panels, according to officials. He did legally purchase two AR platform rifles at a local sporting goods store on two separate dates and also 375 rounds of ammunition on another date. And they said that the gun purchases were made on uh, for his 18th birthday. Whew. Um, All um, right, um, so um, that's uh, the information we have. I, mm-hmm. I, I, this this is really impacting how I, how I parent. I don't know how other parents out there feel, mm-hmm. but I'm really, really, really thinking about homeschooling my kids. But you know, even that's difficult because I saw how during COVID, you know, how stressful homeschooling homeschooling is and you know my, my my oldest daughter she's a she's a teenager so she's at that age where she wants to go out and socialize with her friends in the mall and other places and my mindset right now is uh-huh. hell no now mind you i already suffer from parental paranoia which i call the anxiety that just comes with being a parent but boy that anxiety is so heightened right now and i know i know that i'm you know not doing right well, by my say, kids by doing that well i will say this and I, I this is i can't say this is lucky but i got kind of lucky because the last two three years we've been down we've it's been pandemic so the mm-hmm. kids haven't been going out so i've been feeling a lot safer but oh so like the last so yeah because your daughter's what 18, 18 my daughter's 20 20 so, so, so 19 18 oh, yeah. 17 she's pretty much been locked down and my wow. son who's 18 18 17 16 they've pretty much been locked in the house so they missed yeah. that element which is sad but it's kind of making me more comfortable, you know what I mean? And it's going to get to the point when they want to go out, we all going out. But our comfortability as parents isn't good for them because they still have Correct. to go out there and socialize and yes. be around their friends and be yeah. around their peers. So I know I'm not doing right by, That's true. you know, my, my kids right now. But God, But man, you want I, your kids to be safe. Yeah, I just don't know how I get rid of that parental paranoia, especially with this situation. Oh, we all go to the mall. You go to the mall with your friends and I'll just be hanging around. I don't want to go to the mall. I'm going to the mall. I'm hanging around. I'm watching you. Dad, yeah, you want to go to the to food court? You want to go to the arcade? I'm, I'm, I'll be over here. How about we not go? The mall, we got the mall at home. We don't, but, you know, no, they parents hang, say. They want to hang with their friends. Don't go to the mall. We got a mall at home. We got the mall at home. <laughs> Remember when we was young? Don't go to McDonald's. We got McDonald's at home. We got McDonald's we at home. white bread with a burger. Ham and cheese. And cheese ain't even melted. All right, and they're... There are also two Texas funeral homes who are offering free services for Uvalde school shooting victims. So for those families, Hillcrest Memorial Funeral Home and Rushing Estes Knowles Mortuary uh, made the announcement to help the families after the shooting. Wow, that's oh, drop on the clues bomb for them. That's big, though. See, I respect that. That's when people are being humans, you but, know what I mean? And stepping up and, and understanding that, you know, the humans... Need but, help but at we a time still, like this. We're still going to have to help more. And the reason I say that is, you know, funerals are expensive. And mm-hmm. the services, the fact that they're taking care of the services is great. But that's usually, you know, allowing them to use the home and probably a preacher speaking. But you still got to pay for the casket and, and actually burying them in oh, the ground. Wow. So I'm sure they're still going to need some help financially. And I don't know, you know, I haven't seen any GoFundMes, but I would definitely love to to, 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 to send some money to help those families. That is very but expensive. We'll, we'll find out and do some research Please. on that. And. Yes, the NRA, the National Rifle Association, also released a statement. Uh, They said, our deepest sympathies are with the families and victims involved in this horrific and evil crime. On behalf of our members, we salute the courage of school officials, first responders, and others who offered their support and services. Although an investigation is underway and facts are still emerging, we recognize this was the act of a lone, deranged criminal. As we gather in Houston, because, you know, they do have their meeting, um, 
actually, I think it is it tomorrow. Uh, we will reflect on these events, pray for the victims, recognize our patriotic members, and pledge to redouble our commitment to making our schools secure. Mm. All, right. All right. Well, that is your front page news. Yo, I would I would love to talk to the other parents this morning. Cause, 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 I, am, am I alone? What you mean with this parental paranoia? What do you you mean? know what I mean? Because you know, in, in my last book, Shook, when I talk about parental paranoia, which is Correct. the anxiety that comes with being a parent. So I just mm -hmm. wonder, like, when you see things like the Rob Elementary shooting, does that impact how you parent? Meaning, it has to keeping keeping your kids from doing things like that. that I know they would want to do, whether to. it's a field trip, whether it's going to the mall, you know. Or even just going to the park. Like but, your little kid's going to the park. Like, ugh. But you know what doesn't even start there? A lot of people, a lot of parents just have that beforehand. Like, you know, and let's open up the phone lines. We'll talk about it. Like my wife, you know, my wife has never went on a field trip as a kid because her parents wouldn't let her go. So when all the kids went on a field trip, she was stuck in school. She would be the only kid, like a couple kids stuck hey, in the school. My 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 daughter got a field trip coming up. And I'm like, I, I told her two days ago, like, I don't know. I might have, we might have to cancel this. Well, well, what we do is if we can't go. You oh, I was go. going anyway. Oh, all right. But still, I still don't, we don't need to be there. Neither none of us. <laughs> That's how I feel. All right, well, let's right open now. up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. All the parents out there. Is this, is this impacting how you parent? I know I know we all suffer from parental paranoia anyway. Just the anxiety that comes with being a parent, but is this making it heightened? All right. 800-585-1051. Let's talk about it. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It it's topic time. Pick up the phone, baby. Call 800 585 1051 to join into the discussion with the Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you just joined us, uh, we're talking about parental, parental paranoia. paranoia. Now, this comes from where, Charlamagne? Well, you know, uh, my last book. You know, shook one. I got a whole chapter called Parental Paranoia. And I think that, you know, if you're a parent, that's just the anxiety that comes from, you know, just having kids. Mm -hmm. Right. And after what we saw this past, what was that, Monday? What day was that? Sunday? I, don't, I can't even remember. What, Tuesday, you mm -hmm. know, the, the, sh the shooting at, you know, Rob Elementary School. I know for a fact it's really impacting how I parent. You know, I'm thinking about, you know, pulling my daughter from her field trip that she got coming up. And, you know, my daughter, the, my oldest daughter, the teenager now, so she wants to do things like, you know, go to the mall mm -hmm. and, you know, hang out with her friends in public places. I'm talking about even just hanging out in front of the ice cream parlor, you know, or, right. you know, your younger kids, they want to go to the park. And I'm like, no, we not, we got, we got park at home. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm dead. I'm, we got mall at home. You know, we got a field trip at home, even right. though we have none of this stuff at home. You know what I mean? But I just, I don't know. Man. I just want to talk to other parents this morning. Cause I just, I, I know I can't be alone with this and I feel bad because you want your child to have those experiences you want your child to have those experiences with their friends you want them to have a childhood basically and I know you can't protect your kids from everything in the world but damn it if I won't try and I know what makes me comfortable as a parent is taking away from experiences that she'll never get again so it's like I just emotionally it just makes me yeah. feel bad well I will say this with, with having so many kids you, you get a couple of do-overs right um, with my 20 year old and my 18 year old, I was very, very uh, protective over them. I, I didn't want, I didn't let them go out. They weren't allowed to do some of the things that their friends are able to do, whether it was go to the park or go to the mall without me and my wife being there or a family member being there. And I realized when they got a little older, they didn't have as, as many friends because it was, I didn't allow them to go out as much. Mm -hmm. But now with the, with the younger kids, I'm starting them to let them go out more. I'm, but I'm going out with them. That's so not fair for older kids. It's I, but, not. But but it, you know you 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 see how it affects them. Absolutely. You know what I mean. And as a kid, you know I went out. I was at the park. I was playing with my friends. I have so many different friends from different blocks and different areas because I went out. My kids don't have that because I was so protective of them because I didn't want to see them get hurt. But I didn't what you see them. what you just said is what makes me feel bad because I know I have friends who were the older child who didn't get to do. A lot of the things that the parents let Correct. the younger kids do, you know, and it's just like it's not my fault. The circumstances of the world are the way that they are right now. So it makes me feel bad that I'm not letting my oldest daughter do certain things. But then it's like, man, I got to I got to protect my family. You do. All right. But just think about it like this. At what age were you allowed to travel and not travel as flying because we couldn't afford it back in the day, but drive to another place to anything? Well, or to go to another city. My circumstances were a little different. My father was dealing with substance abuse and you know he was he was wilding you know what i mean so 
I didn't have much parental supervision. Oh, <laughs> I was, my goodness. I was a bad kid. But put it like this. Like, my daughter right now, she's a junior at NYU. She has never traveled anywhere without me. Never gone anywhere. Like, you know how kids go to spring break? They go to Atlanta. Yeah. They go see their friends. Never. Well, see, I used to lie about stuff like that. that to your point, I, I lied and went. To, I, I left and went to Black Biker Weekend in Myrtle Beach one weekend when I was in high school and didn't even tell my parents. I just went, had five dollars in my pocket, and I just $5 left. $5 yes, I just had five dollars in my pocket, and I went with three of my homeboys. So I was just missing for the weekend. <laughs> and guess what? What? Nobody went looking for me because they knew that little badass boy is at Black He'll Biker Weekend in Myrtle Beach. He'll be back, and I'm gonna beat his ass when he get home, God. Goodness gracious! I think we should talk to your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, they didn't really love you. We were talking about Yee's parents not taking her to Disney, but jeez. No, uh, my parents loved me. I was going to ask also, Yee, now, I know uh, you got a bunch of God kids, Yee, and you watch your, your God kids. How, does, does this make you feel any way when you got your kids? I mean, I think it's way different than being a parent, but I had a lot of freedom when I was growing up. So, you know, I look at it a little differently. That's all. My parents definitely let me do what I needed to do and be responsible. You can't control what anybody else does. But you also don't want to be scared to live your life and deprive your kids of, you know, having a good time Absolutely. and being a kid. Absolutely. Hello, who's this? Hey, good morning, it's Nicole. Hey, Nicole, you got kids? I do. I have a four-year-old. And how, how does this, you know, with everything that's going on, how does that make you feel as a parent? So I actually have double paranoia because I have a four-year-old, but I also work in a school in the Bronx. Mm. Oh, wow. Uh, so it does give me... It should be triple parent, with the Bronx. You know, the extra paranoia. Yeah, well, so that's that's my point is that you have so many things to worry about that I just kind of tried not to live in fear because you can't go to a grocery store or a movie theater. Um, realistically, you can't keep your kids in the house. Um, so just trying to push through that and understand yeah. and teach them different things. What you just said. To, that we still have to go in the world. Mm -hmm. What you said about not living in fear is, is it, it messes with me uh, on a spiritual level, too, because we know we're supposed to walk by faith. Right. Like we're supposed to believe right. in a higher power. But in my mind, I feel like, you know, God is the one telling me like, hey, shut all of this down. You know, nope, let her stay home. And it's confusing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's confusing, because I know yeah. I just, I I, it's, to, it's just confusing. It is. Thank you, Mama. You I used mean? to hate when my mom used to be like, I, I have a feeling you shouldn't go out. I just got a bad feeling. And I used to be like, oh, my God, now I can't go out because you had a feeling? I, I, yeah. be, see, I be trusting them feelings from I the male just, though. When a black woman tell you, you might need to sit your ass down, you probably need to sit your ass down. If I think about all the times my grandma... Uh, mama said that to me and I still went out and I wonder why I got in so much trouble when I was younger. Right. I should have listened. I'm not, I, I don't play about say, that. Her way of saying no was ask your father. That's what my wife does too. She'd be like, ask your dad. They know my answer gonna be no. We won't go where? How, how long? How far is that? With who? Lord have mercy. Nah, we're not going. Nah, we're not doing it. We got more calls? Yeah, no, we'll, we'll take some more when we come back. 800 585 1051. We're asking all the parents out there, you know, with everything going on. Is this impacting how you parent, man? Is your parental paranoia, the anxiety that comes with being a parent through the roof right now? It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Mm -hmm. I know it, man. 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 Call me. Add your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you just joined us, we're talking about, to all the parents out there, you know, with everything going on in this world, the mass yeah, shootings. I seen a, 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 a second grader. They found a gun in his, his desk yesterday. I'm with everything you. going on, does this affect the way that you parent? Because, I mean, listen, we all already suffer from parental paranoia. I, I wrote a whole chapter about this in my last book, Shook One. And when you see these situations, like what happened at Rob Elementary School, it brings back all the memories of, you know, Sandy Hook and anything. And it's not even just Rob Elementary. It's like what happened at the grocery store. It's what happened uh, at, at the grocery store in Buffalo, the church in California. Like these things are happening so much right. now. And I feel bad because you want your child to have these experiences. You don't want to deprive them of just, you know, living their life. But then you want to protect them as well. And you feel like protecting them. It's keeping them at home. Like, don't don't go anywhere unnecessary. Correct. That's how I be feeling. All right. Well, let's go to the phone lines. Hello, who's this? DJ MV, this is Cryptic. What's up? What's up, bro? You got some, you got kids, bro? Yeah, man. I got a daughter. She's nine years old. Well, first off, Yeti Morris Chestnut was good, man. Peace, What's King. Thank you for acknowledging. Who's uh, that? Thank you for acknowledging hey, my, my, not here. my, my attractiveness. Ahead, uh, no, no problem, man. Yeah, man. Yo, first off, it's a tragedy. Every time, you know, a parent has to bury their kids. That's absolutely that's, 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 You know, it's, it's horrible. But um, I got a nine-year-old daughter. 
parental parent number is a real thing, man. You know, I'm uh, I'm with you when it comes to uh, keeping your kids at home, when it comes to homeschooling. But, you know, socially, they're going to be growing up awkward. That's how I feel, you know. They're not going to be able to um, have a proper conversation with people. They're going to be sexuals, but I don't feel like they'll have what they need to be a part of society. That's the right you know. Hey, listen, I agree with you, and that's what makes it so difficult. But you know, man, when you especially when you got girls, you see all this stuff about human trafficking and all of this other stuff. So it's not even just the things like the, the violence, the shootings. It's you know, that's the, you know, you it's hear stories about the girls getting kidnapped at Dallas Mavericks games. You're like, man, what the hell? But not only that, bullying is, is so much going on, and 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 I don't think I, 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 there's nobody for these kids to talk to. There's no there's nobody to protect these kids. So I feel like as a parent, you got to be there majority of the time to protect them. Hello, who's this? And, I just want to say, kids are getting a lot of trouble at home, too, just to put that out there. Uh, Hello? Nah, not like the outside world. My online. kids don't get that much trouble. Do nah, but I monitor my kids. I can control them. I know what my kids are online doing. I ain't worried about no homeschool shooting. Yeah. There ain't no homeschool shooting happening. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Cherie from Indianapolis. Hey, Cherie. You, you got kids, Cherie? I do. I have a 10-year-old, and he has autism. Mm. So this topic, I have to call you guys. Because I'm a registered nurse, and I get up every day, and I talk about mental health awareness, because it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Yep. And I think we need to focus more on that. And thank you, Charlemagne, for all the work that you are doing with mental health. Thank you, Queen. Thank you. Thank, and you. thank you guys, too, and Angela Yee and um, DJ Envy, because you do a lot for the community. But anyway, I just wanted to say that we have to start talking more about mental health, because this is where these type of episodes are stemming from. We're not focusing enough on mental health awareness. I agree with you because there's a lot of hurt people hurting people, you know, and that's why yeah. I always say we, re, we we rely on each other as humans to protect each other every day just based on our, our behavior, man. So I agree with you. Hello, who's this? Hi, Nessa. Hey, Nessa. You got kids, Nessa? Yes, I have two girls, two daughters. What's, what's your thoughts, man? I, I know parenting got to be crazy right now. Yeah, the parental anxiety I have when I go out anywhere with my kids, even when I'm not with them, but when we go to restaurants, I'm sitting making sure that I'm facing doors. Uh, we go to grocery stores. I'm thinking about what what's our exit plan if something happens. It's just, it's outrageous. Man, yeah. See what I'm saying? I, I'll be honest though. This makes me feel better because I know I'm not alone. Even though I, I know parental paranoia is real and it's got to be heightened right now for everybody. All right. Well. All right. We got rumors on the way, E. And by the way, mm -hmm. there is no moral to this story. Mm -mm. After I go to therapy tomorrow <laughs> and talk to my therapist about this, maybe I'll have something for y'all next week. But you know, parental paranoia is real because my therapist always tells me in regards to any anxiety. Um, think about all the times you thought something was going to go wrong, but it didn't. It's very hard not, it's very hard to feel like that now. I can't just say, well, you know, yeah, she's right. All the times I thought about something going wrong, it didn't go wrong. But man, when you see all these things going wrong mm -hmm. and all of these places that we frequent on the regular from grocery stores to schools, it's like, come on, bro. Yeah, but you know what, too? And, and this is, I know we're rapping. I don't just have it for myself. I have it for other people's kids too. Absolutely. Like like yesterday, I, I seen this this young parent. He was he was playing. Not even a young parent. Like an older brother. He was walking his kid, and I and I told him, "Look, you should be on the other side or the sidewalk. Like, walk. You walk closer to the street. That's your right. kid shouldn't be walking close to the street. That's your, right. Your baby brother should walk to the, close to the street. Even when I'm in the airport. That's right. And I see a parent talking on the phone and not watching their kid, and their kid's about to hit their head. And I know I should mind my own business, but I don't want to see no child hurt. And because any and, and or no I, child grab. And like when you hear stories like, oh, the fifteen year old girl got you know kidnapped from the Dallas Mavericks game, or you hear the young girl got shot in the Bronx. Like if you're a parent, you automatically see your child in that situation. Absolutely. So that's that's what you're doing. You're looking and you're like, yo, damn, I want him to protect his child the way I would protect mine. And that's how we should always be. A, that's that's how you protect. That's how a village protects each right. other. All right. Well, we got rumors on the way. Uh, yes, we'll be talking about Nori. He has some issues. And that is with the hip-hop culture and who they are putting first. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. This is The Rumor Report with Angela Yee. Rumor has it. Rumor has it. On The Breakfast Club. So listen up. Well, Nori was on Twitter, and he had some things he wanted to get off his chest. He said, I have been the best to this culture. I've always put hip-hop first, and I see you guys go to Ellen and David Letterman's and Zane Lowe and treat them with more respect than the culture, but you say you want black excellence. I'm going to be honest. Even going to Oprah or Gayle is trash at this point. We control our in culture. Yikes. Why go outside of it? 
David Letterman is my favorite, but man, why go there or Ellen before a million dollars worth of game or Joe or the champs or even Twitter ish. So that was Nori, uh, I guess, weighing in. I don't know what prompted this uh, for him, but some people thought it was Cardi B on my next guest needs no introduction. I'm sure he's going to text us momentarily and let us know. <laughs> now, I do agree with <laughs> Nori when it comes this. to that, when I see that for a lot of artists. I, I know people were speculating that it was Cardi. Um, and I would say one thing about Cardi. Um, Cardi does a lot of the things that a lot of artists won't do. Oh, absolutely. She goes mm -hmm. to a lot of those places. So I doubt he was talking to Cardi. Maybe he didn't know. But Cardi does interviews with everybody. She still touches the, the, the club. She still goes out and goes to, to, to black-owned restaurants. She still supports a lot of the DJs that helped her out. Absolutely. That that came up on her. Um, so I know Cardi still does that. So maybe he had misinformation when he was talking about Cardi. But now listen, I don't I know. Do yeah, feel Cardi like that. even did Cardi even did lip service on her own free will. Yes, yes. but let's be clear. I don't know if Nori was talking, talking about, about Cardi, Cardi so I'm not going. Yeah, even... we don't know that. He said that's why he said speculating. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but when I seen that. it in some of the blogs, they said he was. But I, I know for a fact she does a lot of the stuff that most artists would never do. But I do feel that like, I do feel that like, I do feel oh, like when artists blow up, they they don't go to a lot of the places that help them get there, and they start doing, you know, the crossover things. And I think that's why. But when we say artists, who are we talking about? Musicians, I do see a lot anybody of these... that that we helped on the but way like up. Like who? Like who? Like w w in particular. I, I don't yeah, know like why y'all doing this. Like why y'all, like why y'all talking to artists? Like I, 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 I agree I'm with. I'm not. That's what I'm saying. I don't. I don't see. I do see a lot of people going on million dollars worth of game, and I do see people going on drink champs. That's why I'm asking. Oh, like, who okay. Who do we think doesn't do that? Well, I will say I agree with Nori on the treating the other outlets with more respect part because the publicist and label will come to black outlets and say, don't ask this, don't ask that. But mm -hmm. when they sit with the white outlets, they will say, we are open to discussing anything. Correct. So that to me is where the respect is because you're giving these white outlets the sound bites that go viral and you make those uh, persons' platforms bigger. But it's just as far as like, you know, doing million dollars worth of game or drink champs or, you know, whoever. Or, or Letterman or Gail or Oprah, you should do it all. You but know? I'm, I'm thinking, of, <laughs> I'm thinking of our biggest artists that we have in in hip hop, whether it's Hove or it's J Cole or or whoever you love. Or, or... Hove does nothing. Hove, Hove been here. Like, what's the last thing Hove did? Rap Radar. Yeah, but Hove's done Rap Radar. Hove has been here. Oh yeah, he's been, he's been uh, to hundred percent. He's, 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 he's Hove has done. You know, it's but a, he's the, also done Dave Letterman. The goal is to reach as many people as possible, and the goal is to gain as, as much new audience. So you should do it all. If you have the type of stature where you can do a Letterman and then turn around and do a Drink Champs, I don't have a problem with it. Do it. The only person that <laughs> I haven't seen do interviews is Drake, but he doesn't do it across the board. I haven't, Jake I, has his own station. Yeah, so he has he his own station. That's right. He, but I haven't yeah. seen him do it across the if board. If you have the stature to do do it, do them all, do them all. And not too many people have that stature. Not too many people have the stature to be able to go do Letterman and then have the option to come do, you know, Drink Champs or Rap Radar or Million Dollars Worth of Game. Yeah. I agree. All right, now Dave Chappelle, by the way, Black Star and Black Star, most definitely Talib Kweli, are going and Donnell Rawlings are all going to be on the next Drink Champs. So make sure you watch that you know, and listen to it on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. That's going to be good. He's getting that first Dave Chappelle interview after everything that happened. So you know that's a blessing. <laughs> Drop on the clues right. bombs for NOIE. And by the way, Dave Chappelle is one of those people I'm talking about. He has the stature to do the Letterman. Mm -hmm. And then turn around and do drink champs. He's he done Oprah. You know what I mean? He's done Oprah. He's done Oprah. He's had Dave Letterman in Yellow Springs, that's, Ohio. That's that's what I'm saying. Dave has also show. done the Breakfast Club, and he done he did, does everything. That's what I'm saying. I like how you keep sleep, slipping Breakfast Club in there. I like Goddamn that. right. I like that. I like that. That's what I should. I like that. All right, now Brandy has responded to Jack Harlow. She did a freestyle over first class. Brandy did the Breakfast and... Club. And <laughs> yeah. So did Jack Harlow. So did Jack Harlow. I'm gonna put that out there. <laughs> now, this all started because Jack Harlow was surprised to find out that Brandy and Ray J are siblings. And so Ray uh, J Brandy's definitely did the Breakfast Club. A couple times. Yeah. Taking shots at Jack Harlow. And, you know, this is all very playful. So here's her freestyle. Need a breath of fresh air and I'm breathtaking. Painted pictures, Cinderella scriptures, but that don't mean jack in the streets. Jack of all trades, now I'm here jack of the beats. Queens cancel, but you can never cancel a queen. Crown concrete stone, an angel in disguise, a roam the earth.
word God like the son of Jehovah's on the bear witness to my second coming a hundred miles of running still getting money from Mo to the I overdone it over 20 years and I'm still a topic a picture's worth a million now I'm feeling feeling dropping 43 I'm feeling like a kid with millions watching popular but now I'm popping this shit for those out of pocket I'm win diamond guess I'm still a gold mine shining this black excellence at its finest don't call me brandy no more call me your highness built tougher than my brother Ray J glasses Chris is passion you woke up a beast your Highness! Dropping the clues bombs for Brandy, man. Moesha! I wrote that. You wrote that? I wrote that. That's my child. I wrote that. I wrote that intended to rage. She was flowing on that. I wrote that. I ain't mad at her. I wrote Don't call that. me Brandy. Call me Your Highness. Black <laughs> excellence at its finest. All right, Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> what Jack gonna do? All right, Jack, well, you got 24 hours to respond. Jack better leave her yeah, alone. Yeah, Jack better see that. Leave her alone. Take <laughs> <laughs> leave leave that out. Leave you, it alone. Jack, you know we rock with you, but if you thought Drake bodied you, Brandy just did you dirty. <laughs> leave it alone. Don't okay. <laughs> gas like that, man. Right. You're gonna be flying coach. No more right. first class for you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> leave her alone. But that is your rumor reports. We don't want them problems. Leave it alone, Jack. <sighs> oh. He should come respond with uh, uh, over. I want to be down though, just to do wow. it. He should just do it. The remix version too, just to wow. do it. Not like a diss, but just do a fly verse over a Brandy record. Why not? Yeah, why not? Well, put that out on the remix. Put the, do the remix and have Brandy on the remix. What do you mean? Oh, first class. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's not a bad idea. Mm. All right. Who are you giving your donkey to? Uh, four after the hour. You know, everybody's having these conversations about uh, you know, rap lyrics being used. Uh, in court against rappers when they get convicted of crimes. Well, it's not just happening to the rappers. We'll talk about it for after the hour. All right, we'll get to that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Angela Yee here. And if you want quality auto coverage for less, make the right call and go with the General Insurance. Call 800-GENERAL or visit thegeneral.com to find out how much you can save. The General Auto Insurance Services, Inc. and Insurance Agency, Nashville, Tennessee. Some restrictions apply. WWPR FMHD1 New York. And our heart radio station. Charlemagne, say the gang, dunk it on the Charlemagne. You are a donkey. <laughs> it's time for Donkey of the Day. Donkey of the Day does not discriminate. I might not have the song of the day, but I got the donkey of the day. So if you ever feel I need to be a donkey, <laughs> man, hit it with the heat. Uh, yeah, it's the Breakfast Club, bitches. Who's Donkey of the Day today? Well, Donkey of the Day for Thursday, May 26th, goes to Nancy Crampton Brophy. Who is Nancy Crampton Brophy? Well, she is 71 years old and was just found guilty of second-degree murder. Now, what did Nancy do? Well, for the past five weeks, she was on trial facing charges that she murdered her husband in cold blood. A jury, a 12-person jury, after 26 days in court, came to a unanimous decision to lock her ass up for second-degree murder. Let's go to KGW News 8 for the report, please. Count one, murder in the second degree, guilty. After about 24 hours of deliberation, a jury found Nancy Crampton Brophy guilty of killing her husband, Daniel. The murder happened nearly four years ago in June of 2018. The state said Crampton Brophy lied about where she was the morning of the murder. Her van was caught on surveillance in the area of the Oregon Culinary Institute in southwest Portland around the time of the murder. Prosecutors say the motive was money, insurance money. Money Nancy would receive upon her husband's death. During the trial, Nancy told jurors she did not kill her husband. The verdict comes almost four years to the day of Daniel Brophy's death. Hey, you commit the crime, you got to do the time. That's not why we are here today. We are here to discuss art reflecting life, our life reflecting art. All right, there's all these conversations happening in the media right now about rappers' lyrics being used against them in court. My thoughts on that are simple. Number one, I don't want people committing crimes, period. Okay, I know folks do what they have to do to survive, but my number one priority will always be to provide the opportunities and resources to people who need it so they don't have to go out and commit crimes. This is why I push uh, investing in your mental wealth so much, because I want folks to go to therapy so they can get the healing they need so they don't show up in this world hurt and in pain because hurt people hurt people. Folks in pain project that pain on the others, and they just walk around bleeding on folks who didn't cut them. So when it comes to, you know, Drug dealing, drug using, violence. I would rather y'all not partake in any of those activities, but I understand how you get there, okay? But I would rather you not do it, which leads me to number two. If you are going to do it, if you can't avoid it for whatever reason, if you have done it, are still doing it, and you are in the process of changing your life through art, 
By art, I mean rap and hip hop. Please, I'm begging you, don't put it in your music. Okay, one of the worst things we told our culture, and I'm guilty of it too, I am absolutely guilty of it. One of the worst things we told our culture is that we want our rappers to be real. Okay, that we want our rappers to live what it is they're rapping about. I apologize for ever saying these things. I apologize for ever putting that in the universe because telling folks to keep it real and by real, what we meant was criminal was some of the worst advice we fed our culture because what happened was all the rappers who were, you know, just doing it for entertainment, who, you, we, who we used to clown and, you know, call CB4, they waited until, you know, they got rich and successful to become gangbangers. Okay, and they started doing some of the things that they once lied about, okay? But then you had the dudes in the street who was really living that life, who was really about it, about it, said to themselves, oh, we can talk about what we really doing, and since we really doing it, we we gonna be the stars, right? We gonna get rich and famous now. Oh, well, let me go in here and indict my whole hood to a beat. Okay, that's essentially what happened, all right? All the street dudes who were still in the street started rapping about their day-to-day -day activities, not just rapping about them, doing interviews about them. Okay, I mean, straight up giving law enforcement and prosecutors everything they needed to build a case, connecting all the dots for them. All right. You know how many law enforcement officials probably got bonuses cracking these cases by simply subscribing to some of y'all YouTube pages? So the issue to me isn't whether or not your lyrics should be used in court. Okay. Because what confession recorded visual or audio wouldn't a good prosecutor use in court? Duh. The issue is that y'all got the audacity, the unmitigated gall to rap about these things in the first place. But I'm here to tell you today, this isn't just a rap thing. This isn't just a, you know, hip hop street black thing. OK, today, Nancy Crampton Brophy is getting donkier today because she was found guilty of murdering her husband. See, Nancy must have wanted to live her art. What are you talking about, Uncle Sharla? Nancy wanted to live her art. Well, let's go to Inside Edition for the report, please. Is this gray-haired romance novelist a grieving widow or a calculated murderer? Nancy Brophy is author of such steamy romance books as The Wrong Husband and The Wrong Lover, and also an article titled, get this, How to Murder Your Husband. Now she's accused of doing just that, gunning down her husband of 26 years. Nancy shot him first in the back. In the 2011 How to Murder Your Husband article, Nancy Brophy writes, a spouse who commits meriticide will almost certainly become a prime suspect. To get off, the wife must be organized, ruthless, and very clever. Seven years later, her husband winds up brutally murdered inside the kitchen of a Portland, Oregon Culinary Institute where he taught cooking. Now, I'm not the highest grade of weed in the dispensary, nor am I the strongest Avenger, but if you write a book called How to Murder Your Husband, a book that details how to not only kill your husband, but how to get away with it, then you probably should, like, never kill your husband. Uh, the caucasity of this woman to write, divorce is expensive, and if you're married for money, aren't you entitled to all of it? But to carry out a successful murder would require you to be organized, ruthless, and very clever because the police aren't stupid. They are looking at you first. Nancy, you should have took your own advice, okay? Not only did Nancy play the role of grieving widow, she went to the police and asked for a letter to say she wasn't a suspect so she could get her life insurance money. Not only did she write this How to Murder Your Husband book, but research she conducted on her own computer about how to buy and assemble an untraceable ghost gun. And she lied and said she was nowhere near the crime scene, but surveillance footage showed Nancy driving to and from the crime scene during the exact window her husband had been shot, which contradicted uh, the author's claims that she'd been at home in bed the whole time. Now, very important to note, the judge allegedly... Well, the judge said he didn't let the jury read this book, even though I'm sure some of the jury did anyway. But he, the judge said he didn't let the jury read this book. The judge didn't let this book be used in court. So with that said, how come some of these rappers art is being used in court? If I rapped about some things in my past and then in the future, I got caught up. If I'm not detailing specifics, if it's just art, if it's just entertainment, if it's just generalizations, why are these things being used in court against the rappers? Huh? Huh? Everybody, here's the thing, though. Just please start lying again. All right. We don't need you to live your art. OK, rappers, authors, stop. All right. Stop. This stuff can and will be used against you in a court of law. We see this, and some donkey today just sell themselves.
Please give Nancy Crampton Brophy the biggest ER. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, let me ask you, Envy. Yes, Nancy sir. Lee, yes. Uh, why do you think this woman who wrote this book, How to Murder Your Husband, right? Why do you think the judge didn't allow her book to be read by the jury, but allows rappers' old lyrics to be used against them? Why do you think that is? <laughs> Guess what? Racist! He'll guess. I would have to go white. Okay, okay. What about you, E? What do you think? She's white. Okay. Just just wondering. Wondering what y'all thought. Is she? Yeah, she is. Oh. Very Caucasian. Like, could be on a dollar bill Caucasian. I mean, she's a woman, but you know. Okay, all right, all right. But I can't, you know. One thing about some some white women age like presidents. Yeah, but... Okay. But it was some... OJ wrote a book similar, right? After... Yeah, he did. Uh, it was called uh, If, if I, I Did, did it. it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. Did well, that book come out? No, or was it, just it never came out. Got, it, was, it was supposed yeah, to come out, but it never happened. came out. The interview came out. The interview he did was, for I the book I think there was some out. backlash. <laughs> yeah, I would think. All right. Well, up next, ask ye 800-585-1051. If you need relationship advice or any type of advice, call ye now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Need relationship advice? Need personal advice? Just need real advice? Call up now for Ask Ye. Keep the bread. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Ye, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. It's time for Ask Ye. Hello, who's this? This is Troy from Virginia. What's your question for Ye? I just had a quick question. I knew you were supposed to be dropping a business or a company where it helps big credit, and I was listening up for it, but it never came back around. Oh, uh, yeah, so that is called Stellar, and it's um, Stellar Fi, S-T-E-L-L-A-R-F-I dot com, and it's the okay. first and only credit builder. It reports your bill payments um, directly to Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Those are the three main uh, credit reporting agencies, and that's what helps you build, uh, build a positive payment history for you. So a lot of bills that you pay monthly, uh, those will get reported, and then that will help boost your credit right away. And they make sure those bills are paid on time. So you can go to StellarFi.com, again, if you want to sign up. But we actually launch in June. So right now you can sign up for the waiting list. We have this whole contest where we're actually going to help uh, people pay their bills as well if you win. And then we actually launch um, in a couple of weeks. Okay, thank you so much. I couldn't wait to hear more information about it. I appreciate that. All right, no problem. We all know how important credit is. And so if you don't have any credit at all or if you have poor credit, we'll help you get your credit up. And then that way you can do what you need to do if you need to buy a home, get a car, so many different things. Um, and your credit score is important for that. Shout out to you. Can I give my wife a quick shout out, man? Of she, course. She got mad at me last time I called and I didn't say, say nothing. So shout out. I love you, girl. I love the kids. Mason King, Carter, Corey. Can't wait for y'all to hear this. Breakfast Club, I love you guys, too. Y'all have a good one. All right, you too. Good luck with your credit. I'll let you guys know when it launches for sure. All right, we got more ASCII when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Here's some real advice with Angela Yee. It's Ask Yee. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We're in the middle of Ask Yee. Hello, who's this? Hey, everybody. Good morning. Okay, so. Good morning. I just wanted to know your take on what I call hood divorces. It's mm-hmm. basically um, when a couple is still married on paper, but they have lived separately maybe like a year. up. To, I know people that have been uh, living separately up to 10 years, but on paper they're still married. So um, it's, it's single people out here. You kind of got to get in where you fit in, but, you know, on paper they're still married. So what's your take on that, on dating hood divorce individuals? Well, why don't you guys get a divorce? Is it the cost of it? it, it it's not me. It's them. I Just dating, I've, I've known several individuals that have been hood divorced, um, and they have different reasons. They A lot of times they say the kids, which I don't understand because the kids Oh, okay. Anyway. So you're dating somebody, and he's not officially divorced, but he's been living away from his wife for 10 years. I'm, I'm thinking about dating. Okay, someone. you're thinking about it. Yeah. So, what, yeah. so his reason is his kids. Yeah, well, the reason is um, they're getting to it. He's trying to uh, just figure it out. Um, they're not together. Again, they don't, they're not trying to get together. But it's really, it really is. The reasons don't make sense to me, but I don't know. So, uh, 
uh, uh, so I'm confused. Like, tell me what they are. Because uh, I feel the like thing is, can... if, and I'm not speaking about one particular person. I've had this happen at least three times um, with individuals mm-hmm. that are still married, but they're not living together. So I'm just wondering if that's even a situation. And some of them have gone on to get married. I mean, get divorced. Some of them are still divorced, but living separately. But I'm just wondering, is that even something to entertain? Okay, so this is my thoughts on it. Was the person open and honest with you, right? Did they tell you Mm -hmm. right away, look, here's my situation. My wife and I are divorced. We don't live together and are we in the process of getting a divorce that's important and I also think for you as an individual you have to decide what you will and won't be okay with now for you if you're okay with the fact that somebody's still married but telling you that he is going to go through the process of getting a divorce and you believe him and he has proven to you that they're not still together then that's a decision that you have to make if you decide okay, I I can't be with you unless you get an official divorce and then we can discuss it. That's really up to you. The ball is in your court to make that decision. All a man can do is tell you what it is that he's going through and then all you can do is base your decision off of those, that information that he gives you. So what are your thoughts? Um, My thoughts are these morals my mama gave me. They just sometimes get in the way. But, you know, so I truly, I'm I'm not into it. I, I guess I'll just wait it out. Um, Oh, and mm-hmm. of course, they other people in the process. But if that right. actually happens, then we can, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to compromise your morals just to be with somebody. And honestly, if this is something that he really, really wants and he can prove it to you by showing you, okay, here's the lawyer. I've been talking to the lawyer. We're going through the process. Then that to me is proof enough for you that this person really is making that huge effort. Now, if he's saying, well, it's too much trouble to kiss this, this, that, and the third, and you're not comfortable with that and your morals are telling you, no, you don't have to compromise what you feel. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much. And no real man, no real man should try to make you compromise that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And I just want to tell you, I love you all. Charlemagne, I just love the way you speak to our black men and encourage them. I just love y'all. All All right. We love you too, boo. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Ask ye 800-585-1051. Now we got uh, rumors on the way, ye? Yes. Kourtney Kardashian, her fertility doctor instructed her to ingest Travis Barker's sperm. We'll tell you how often she had to do that in order to get pregnant. All right, we'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's about time. What's going on? Rumor Report. Rumor Report. This is The Rumor Report. Talk to him. With Angela Yee on The Breakfast Club. Well, Queen Latifah has announced that she's doing It's Bigger Than Me. It's a tour that she'll be going on, and that's where she'll be discussing um, obesity and shifting the conversation. She wants to empower our community with open and honest discussions about how living with obesity in America, um, you know, is more than just about your hormones. It's more than just about uh, eating properly. She wants people living with obesity to seek help and open the floor for personal stories, questions, and voices to be heard. She said she wants to Mm -hmm. change the way the world understands, talks about, and treats obesity. And she's partnered with Novo Nordisk for that campaign. She said, we're both aligned when it comes to the topic of obesity and the stigma that comes along with it. And the fact that it's not just about weight, it's not just about genetics or hormones, and most importantly, to create a conversation to allow people to voice their feelings about what they're feeling and the challenges they face and to let them know it's not something that's their fault. So statistics do show 41% of Americans are obese, and that includes four out of five black women. And she said this uh, perspective that she has has shifted recently she said she herself has struggled over the years with this she's witnessed artists who have been one size prior to releasing music only to quickly transform their bodies when it's time to promote their new projects then uh that go on to become hits she said when you're you're someone that's looking at that it's like okay is this what i need to do next time i drop this album so i contemplated that and it really made me have a conversation with myself and i'm sure that'll give people proper motivation uh you know to to to, to get healthy, to deal mm-hmm. with the, 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 their matters of obesity, I'm sure. She said one of the scariest things is watching people secretly do surgeries. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, people don't want to publicly share what their journey is. Right. And so 
I think that'd be a good thing. She's got some stops coming up. I think New York is one of her stops that she'll be on during this tour also. So, I'm going to tell you something. I don't express how much I am influenced by Queen Latifah. I love the way she moves and has always moved. I love how she constantly gives back and empowers her hometown in Newark. And I love what her and Shaquem have built over the years with Flavor Unit mm -hmm. Entertainment. I love that black woman and, you know, black man dynamic. Those are the type of partnerships I love. So dropping the clues bonds for Queen Latifah, man. You are an yes. icon. You are loved and valued and Should appreciated. She'll be in New York, Houston, and in L.A. So, mm -hmm. And she also talked about Shaquem in her interview that she did with Ebony. If you guys want to check that whole interview out where she talks about uh, everything that she's doing. That's out now? All right. Uh, yes, the interview's out now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go read that. <laughs> I'm going right All now. All right. Now let's... <laughs> Now let's discuss Kourtney Kardashian. She's on this uh, journey that she's sharing about fertility. And she's really trying to have kids. You know, she just got married and they went to their fertility doctor and they basically gave her some advice on what she should do. So, okay, how's your, your uh, thyroid levels? Can't remember what he said, if it was low or high. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but he said something and um, he told us to um to both of you well he told me that the thing that would help it was drinking his c like four times a week mm -hmm. what they bleep okay <laughs> they bleep semen. this doctor <laughs> what they bleep you semen stop playing what yeah, they bleep it's you? a different word but yeah they, semen. yeah they, yes it's, they said drink yeah. his semen four times a week and to get fertile really mm -hmm. wow yeah. So are we mm -hmm. sure Guy has been the one having the baby? <laughs> what are you saying? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Nothing. What? <laughs> what are, are you, you sure? Uh, you sure? What are you saying? You did miss some days. Are you having the baby over there? <laughs> Too late. I got you first. Got you too <laughs> too late. You, can't, you can't get back. I got you first. You can't even come over here. You guys here can get you. each other. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hate you, man. I hate All right. You, right? <laughs> Too late. You got me. It's like a scissor song over here. <laughs> I hate you. All right. Now, Kanye <laughs> was gearing up to release the second capsule from the Yeezy Gap engineered by Balenciaga collection. It was supposed to actually come out yesterday, but out of respect for the victims of the Uvalde school shooting in Texas, he has decided to delay the drop uh, until Friday. So that's just to let you guys know. Also, Trey, the truth, he declined an invitation to go to the White House because he wanted to be with the Texas shooting victims' families. And so instead of uh, going to where he was invited at the White House to meet with the president, uh, with the families of those who have wrongfully been murdered by police, he said the people of Buffalo, New York, are really in need, as well as the family of children murdered in Uvalde, so I will have to pass. I will be in the field with the people in need. Yeah, he's in uh, Buffalo now. Shout out to Trader Truth and all the work that Trader Truth does. I love that, brother. Oh, yeah, they was out there, uh, Trader Truth, uh, Tamika Mallory, Until Freedom. I think they fed like 500 families yesterday That's dope. in Buffalo, New York. And what's crazy is those are the type of stories that don't get media attention, but mm -hmm. like once again, those are the people that are always on the front lines mm -hmm. holding holding our people down. Absolutely. So, yes, they fed like 500 people yesterday in Buffalo. Tamika Mallory and Trader Truth, Until Freedom, and all of them. So mm -hmm. drop one of Clues bombs for Tamika Mallory. Trader Truth, Until Freedom. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, listen, I don't know. You guys, have y'all listen, ever listened to Aerosmith, the rock group Aerosmith, with the lead singer Steven Tyler? What was this song? You know, they did Walk This Way rock, with Run DMC. Way. I know the version with Run DMC, yeah. That's that about was, it. That's where that it stops for me. But Aerosmith is a... Well, Aerosmith is a huge rock group, and Steven Tyler is huge, too. His daughter, Liv Tyler, also a famous actress. But anyway, he's in rehab right now. He's checked himself into rehab. But it made me revisit a story, and they were just talking about this in the news. He did his memoirs, and he talked a lot about his addiction that he's had since he was 16 years old. And one story that he told was um, about a time that he once had his... Uh, his child's mother, his ex-girlfriend, draw a W on each of his ass cheeks. That way, if drug enforcement agents I've ever checked him when he was getting on a flight and told him to bend over, it would say, wow. Wow. I've heard this story. I do like Earl Smith's Dream On record, though. How's it go? Uh, yeah. Um, dream On! I don't remember. That's all you got? You know what I was thinking, too? <laughs> That's all you got. Hmm. No, actually, Aerosmith is a great group, but I will say they did have this one song that could not work today. It was called Dude Looks Like a Lady. Dude Looks Like a Lady. Yeah, I like that record, too. That's hard. You know that dude, one, huh? Yeah. Like a, what's I wrong with saying Dude Looks Like today. a Lady? <laughs> Nothing. I just said you like that one, huh? Yeah, that record's hard. Dude Looks Like a Lady. Well, it depends what dude you talk about. See, you're right.
But we tried to brush basket, brush past it, so I'm not gonna go back. Okay, good. You wondering wow. how big his butthole is? Because when I first heard that oh story, I was thinking like, damn, if you put a W on each cheek and bend over and it says, wow. You like how big is this man's butthole? Right. Come on, that we've is, been thinking that, that right? Is and, if he's, report. right? <laughs> and if he's upside down, it says mom. Mom, whoa, wow. All right, that was your man. Report. People's Choice mixes up wow. next. I don't know. I'm sorry. You that's gotta put. I'm, that, I'm not gonna lie. That's the anus you take a picture of. Put that. He right. needs to send that to his close friends. Because if you can do that, that's special. All right. You it's should be getting paid club. for that. You people's shouldn't just be telling people that story next. without letting people see Steven Tyler. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. This program is sponsored by BetterHelp. You have a lot on your mind. BetterHelp makes it easy to find a licensed therapist suited to your needs. Get 10% off your first month of online therapy at B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash The Breakfast Club. WWPR FM HD1 New York. An iHeart Radio station. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Houston, we got like three weeks left, two and a half weeks left. My car show, June 19th, Father's Day weekend. If you're looking for a perfect gift for your father, uh, this will be a great gift. Uh, amusement rides, old school cars, carnival games, celebrity cars, slabs, dunks, exotics, and just family fun. So get your tickets, and I can't wait to see you guys. Hey, for sure. And listen, can I say something? Um... We was talking about Steven Tyler and oh, Aerosmith earlier. You no, know, you was talking about his butt. Okay? No, because because you said something. I had to think. I thought about it. You know, we talked the song "Dude Looks Like a Lady." That's a compliment, Maybe. dude. A okay. dude that looks like a lady. If somebody comes to you and say, "Dude, look like a lady," they say, if somebody tells you, you like a lady, they're saying you're pretty. Maybe. Yeah, I would think so. Uh -huh. Yeah, like like I think who's a okay. guy that looks like a lady? And he does say in the song, he says, "Never judge a book by its cover or who you're gonna love." What okay, maybe I need to go listen to the lyrics some more. But <laughs> I, I, just by based off the dude looks like a lady, I'm thinking of a pretty man. Like, uh, what's homie name that was just in Morbius? Uh, Who? You know what I'm talking about. Jared, not Jared. What's the guy's name? You know what I'm talking about, man. Yes, Jared Leto. Dude, Jared Leto looks like a lady a little bit, right? He's a... You know what? Never mind. Y'all just... You, you, you kind of look like a lady when you had the little glasses on. You kind of look like a lady. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Was, that was a... Was that hot? That wasn't flirting. Oh. He okay. was not hot. All right. Not Sexy at all. secretary? No. Not at all? Okay. More Sexy like auntie? Okay. Maybe granny. All right. Okay. All right. Now, do you need some extra bread to help fund your dreams? Now, the Breakfast Club wants to hear what you would do with some daily bread. Hey, maybe you're a small business owner that needs some money to help pay for some bills. Or maybe you're someone who needs some cash to get your business started. Hit up breakfastclubonline.com and tell us what you'll do with $1,000, okay? Powered by U.S. Bank. We'll get there together. All right. And that was an advertisement in case you didn't know. But we're giving away some money. All right. When we come back, we got the positive note. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. And listen, man, I got to salute Audible. The reason I want to salute Audible, Audible is absolutely positively part of my self-care regime. And the reason they're part of my self-care regime is because there's nothing I like to do better in the morning than getting lost in a good audio book or a good podcast. And I listen to all my audio books on Audible, okay, whether it's, you know, wellness programs or financial advice, motivation, whatever you need to inspire you or entertain you, I guarantee you Audible has it, okay? And they just keep adding more and more stuff every week. And I am about to do a shameless plug because I want you to check out the brand new true crime Audible original called Finding Tamika. That is the first release from myself and Kevin Hart's company, SBH Productions, which is a partnership with Audible. And we got a little piece of it for you right here. Tamika was gone, but her ghost would remain waiting. Demanding. Waiting. What followed in that 13-year period pushed a heartbroken family to ask a web of dormant questions. Questions that, if answered, may invoke massive pain, unearth family secrets and resentment, fuel urban rumors and unlock a dark path to human unknowns. Why Tamika? That audio is from episode one, The Sparrow, man. I love finding Tamika. I would not even be a part of it uh, if I didn't love it. Salute to Queen Erica Alexander and Color Farm Media for putting that together. And salute to Erica Alexander for narrating. And another top pick is DJ Envy and his wife, wife's Gia Casey new book, Real Life, Real Love. Life lessons on joy, pain, and the magic that holds us together. Can we play a little piece of that, please? We can't change each other. We actually don't want to. 
and neither should you and your partner. A rule of thumb is asking yourself, if your partner never changes, can you build a life with them? You should never go into a relationship expecting a person to change. That's a risk and a gamble none of us should be willing to take. People only change on their own accord, for their own reasons, and in their own timing. We should want to be the best for ourselves first and for each other second. I wanted you to play uh, chapter 69, which is my secret Don't chapter. Get out of if here, you haven't, I know, I know a lot of y'all have the this book, but on crazy. the audible version, oh, boy. there's a new chapter, it's chapter 69, That's which is lie. narrated by me. That and I talk lie. about the magic that holds us together. My goodness. Us as in Leonard and Rashawn. My goodness. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys, and, and I appreciate all the support from the book. I know it was sold out. They restocked again this week, so I just want to say thank you, guys. And now you got a positive note? Yes, and I just want to tell folks, just to put a button on the Audible thing, you can start listening to both of these today with a free 30-day Audible trial. Just go to audible.com slash breakfast club, okay? Okay. And the positive note, when you are living in a different frequency and energetic vibration, a lot of times people can't hear and understand what you are saying. They can only meet you as deeply as they have met themselves. Don't drain your energy continually trying to explain yourself. Breakfast club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?